Hello friends, nice that you are watching this church service. We celebrate Christ and his sacrifice for us. We are together here in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And we begin our worship service by singing together hymn 14, Come and Fill Our Hearts. We will sing it twice. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship by praying together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. An almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We together now pray the collect of this Sunday. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than walk life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we sing together now hymn 22, Behold the Lamb. And we will do that with some music that sounds from my laptop. Remember the promise made that all will come. 
God, so we share. So we share in this bread of life, and we drink of His sacrifice as a sign. Jesus Christ torn for you Eat and remember the wounds that heal the dead that brings us life pay the price to make us one so we share in this prayer Exodus 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, 
but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On that day you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is yours, your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is taken from Psalm 19, verses 7 to 14, and you're invited to respond with the lines in bold. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweet are also the honey, and drink is of the honey. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping him, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare the innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, the innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The reading is from Romans chapter 7, verses 12 till 25. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous, and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, salt under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, that is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So, I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive 
to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The house that we live in was built before 1920. It's a lovely house with many original features, like stained glass windows and, of course, the sturdy wooden beams that support the roof and the floors. But old age comes with wear and tear. This goes for houses as well as for human beings. Something that really makes the alarm bells go off is when we find those tiny heaps of fine sawdust beneath one of the roof beams. Woodworms. You may have seen what woodworms can do to a piece of wood. The little holes and tunnels they make until the wood is full of pores and will pulverize at the touch. So we have to stop them. We don't want our roof to cave in. So we don't like woodworms and still today they are going to be our inspiration. I even ask you to imagine yourself being one. And to make sense of that exercise, we turn to the words of St. Paul in 1 Corinthians. One of the main topics in the letter is the issue of power and status. There were some people in the church who prided themselves on their high social status, their education, their wealth. They really threw their weight around. Big shots in society, so big shots in the church. This led to outrageous situations, which Paul has to address in his letter. Rivalry, competition for influence, divisions, the bullying and exclusion of those who were less gifted or privileged, even at the Lord's table. This will not do, says Paul. It is worldly behavior. It brings all the power dynamics at work in this world into the church. Worldly power is all about strength, education, 
status, money. It's about pushing away the weak, a survival of the fittest. And this is not what Jesus has taught us and shown us. We cannot build the kingdom of God using the tools of the kingdom of evil. If we try to resist power and violence, using power and violence, we will only substitute one system of evil for another. Haven't we seen this happen time and again throughout the ages? Every time the church copied the methods of this world, every time it aligned herself with the powers that be, it became corrupted and a place of abuse and violence herself. Jesus himself presents us with a very different example. During his 40 days in the desert, he was tempted to use the methods of this world to establish his kingdom. Bow down before me, said Satan, and I will give you all the kingdoms of this world. This surrender to the evil one would have corrupted him and all hope would have died. In our gospel reading, Jesus faced the same temptation. Give us some demonstration of divine power, the Jewish leaders demanded, to prove your authority. But in both cases, Jesus refused. The only sign he was willing to give was crucifixion and resurrection. The only way to the kingdom of God is the way of the cross, the way of self-giving love. To the powers of this world, this is the ultimate weakness and the ultimate foolishness, as Paul points out. Not to kill others, but to give yourself even to the point of death to achieve what you long for. It's absolutely ridiculous. But that is exactly the point. It is so totally unexpected, so counterintuitive, that the enemy is completely outwitted. Returning to the image of the wooden beams, he expects us to attack him with axes, chainsaws and fire. He wants us to attack him that way, because that is a language he understands, and he knows it is a battle we will never win. But that his kingdom will, con will be consumed from the inside by the faithful perseverance of ordinary people, that is just beyond him. I hope you understand by now how the woodworm can inspire us. Like woodworms, we eat through the power structures of this world. We undermine them until they will just pulverize at the touch of God. Talking about woodworms does have its limitation though, because woodworms leave nothing but holes, and when eventually the house collapses, nothing remains but rubble and dust. It is not so with us. We are very special woodworms, we make our holes and tunnels, but then we fill them again. For every mouthful of greed or violence that we take, every bite of injustice, anger or hate that we swallow, we do not leave an empty space. We fill those little tunnels with contentment, peace, righteousness, kindness and love with the fruits of the Spirit, in obedience to God's commandments. It will often go unnoticed, deeply hidden away in the thick wooden beams. But there will come a day when the whole structure will collapse. And lo and behold, what remains is not rubble and dust. Suddenly it will become visible what has been going on all the time. All the good things that we stuffed into the empty pores will stand. A glorious palace shining in the sun, built with gold and silver and precious stones, 
that will endure eternity. Glittering chandeliers, tinkling with all the kind words we have spoken. Beautiful tapestries in which all the cards we have sent have been woven together. The rich colours of the floor tiles speaking of all our small deeds of love. And so on and so on. So let us never feel unimportant or irrelevant as followers of Christ. Let us never say things like, I am too frail, too old, too poor, too mentally troubled, too whatever to be of any use to God. When we feel small and overwhelmed, that is exactly the place where we need to be because we will turn to God and not be tempted to trust in ourselves. So, my beloved fellow woodworms, let us munch away, let us nibble and gnaw and chew through the power structures of evil. It doesn't taste nice, I know, but let us take pride in every little tunnel we make, straight through the supporting beams of this world. And let us fill those tunnels with good things. Against loneliness, send your cards, make your phone calls. Against indifference, smile to the people you meet in the street. Against greed and poverty, be generous with your money. Against all selfishness, give yourself. Against all boasting and self-importance, Say your prayers in humble trust, and I can assure you, it will be worth the effort a thousand times over. Amen. Let us now stand and we express our faith in the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uh, Janneke will now lead us in our intercessions. Whenever I say, Lord, in your mercy, we answer together, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, 
Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we are gathering here. We thank you that you are present. Hallowed be your name. We thank you that you are in our midst. Give us this awareness of your holy presence here among us. Your kingdom come. We thank you for the beauty of your creation, the flowers that are bursting out of the ground, the sun that gives more strength each day during this time of Lent. Give us wisdom how to work with your world and that we may act wisely. May we receive the eyes to see your glory and your kingdom and worship you when we wander in your world. We thank you for the church, your body in this world. Today we gather in all those different places and though we are many and divided, yet we are one because we belong to you. We pray for bishops, Roberts and David, for Jos and for those who serve here today. We thank you. Bless the ministries through your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us peace when we struggle. Give us strength when we feel weak. Give us hope when we lose sight of your goodness. Give us courage when we do not have it. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Dear Lord, give us today your daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We pray that we may see Christ in the scriptures and recognize you in the breaking of the bread. We pray that we will find you here today. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are not able to gather because of persecution or for other reasons. Bless them and keep them. Help them to stay firm and faithful. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Good Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We continue to pray for the corona situation. We pray for wisdom for our government. We pray for protection for medical staff and for everybody involved. We pray for people who suffer in other ways, seen or unseen. We pray for people who have asked for our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Let us pray that the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. Dear Lord, we look forward to your coming and we wish all who do so. We pray for people who live in darkness, who live with addiction, abuse, homelessness, or with mental health problems. Lord, let your light shine on them through us. We pray for those who are confused, wander, and feel lost. For those who live in doubt of your existence, touch them with your healing hands and surprise them with your mighty arm. For your own glory, Lord, May the earth be filled with your glory as the water covers the sea. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And as we continue our worship today, we, we realize that we are not alone, together with all your holy angels and with all those who have gone before us. We praise you, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand for the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to this grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us now greet one another with a sign of peace. Peace to all of you. And peace to you at home who cannot be here now with us. That is sad. We hope and pray that soon this whole situation will change and that we can all meet in normal ways again. Then we can also have a normal offering again. Usually we have the offering now, but well, what to do? Uh, I hope you don't forget your church. Let us together read the offering sentence. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty, or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Amen. And we sing now hymn 10. We sing it twice. Nothing can trouble.
is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. I'd like to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because you give us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace, as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and hearts renewed. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your faces turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise, and we join them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread and he gave you thanks and he broke it and he said, This is my body, given for you all. Then he took the cup. And he gave thanks for the wine. And he said, this is my blood shed for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is, this is our song. song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And let us with confidence pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. These are God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Please at home celebrate this with us at the moment. The Lord is in your midst, in your living room as well. The body of Christ broken for you. 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 Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Let us together pray the prayer after communion. 
Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, Christ. of Christ. Amen. Amen.